Hi, Tatiana. Good to see you. Hi, Peggy. Good to see you, too. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Coffee Time with Tatiana and Peggy. I'm Peggy Gross, and I'm an attorney in Beverly Hills, California. Hi, everyone. My name is Tatiana Skevin. I'm a certified public accountant uh, here in Los Angeles, California, and my firm specializes in forensic accounting services. And because I'm the attorney, I will do the legal disclaimer. Nothing on our channel or in our video is to be taken as legal advice in any case or any legal matter. And our full disclaimer is below, and you can look at that as well if you'd like. We're going to continue talking about assets in the divorce and would like to discuss uh, how to keep your separate property during the marriage. Okay. So Peggy, describe what's the difference between uh, separate property versus community property. Okay, um, that's a good question. <laughs> Very important one. <laughs> um, we're in California right now, and California is a community property state. Uh, not all states are, but we are here in California. Community property is uh, generally defined as any property obtained or assets obtained during the marriage. And during the marriage is usually defined as the date of marriage and the date of separation. And, that, and, and any property or anything gained, uh, even debts, mm -hmm. is part of the community. Um, and then anything, uh, assets or monies gotten before the marriage, right. after mm -hmm. the marriage, right. um, which is usually determined as the date of separation, um, is considered separate property. And also there's some exceptions to the general rule. So you can have during the time of marriage, uh, an inheritance obtained by one party or a gift or even uh, parts of a uh, award in maybe, let's say, a personal injury, uh, damages accident, and that will be that person's separate property. So that kind of goes over what is separate property, right. what is community right. property, what is the time of the marriage. Sounds like there's two distinctions, and then if you have, especially during long-term marriages, things happen, right? And, oh God, yes, and they things start happen. Mixing up and they, <laughs> how do you start distinguishing between, you know, what's separate, what's community during the marriage? So, mm -hmm. okay, that's interesting. And it's so funny what defines what is a mixture of the community property and the separate property. And it's actually a legal case called the marriage of mix and the, oh. <laughs> the people's name was mix. So it's just interesting uh, how that comes down. But you have, you can have assets at the time the marriage is over and you're deciding how to split them up. That, that is like we said, community property, separate property, and then assets that have a little bit of both. There's a little bit of community property in there and a little bit of separate property, and those are called commingled. So when right. you have it commingled, and I could give some examples, but I'll, I'll just define the terms right now. So, so a commingled asset is one that has a little bit of prop, uh, community property interest, has a little bit of separate property interest, um, and they're commingled together kind of in a mishmash, and a judge will look at that and say, you know, if we can't decipher what it is and it's too commingled, right. they just assign it a uh, community property uh, classification right. and then it's split 50-50. Yes, that's absolutely true. And that's, I guess, when forensic accountants uh, do a lot of their uh, tracing. There are different methods, different approaches, how to do, how to go about it. In the state of California, Paychecks are considered community property and most people believe if I go to work and I earn it and the paychecks in my name and it goes to me <laughs> yeah. and I put it in my account it's my separate property. Uh, but in the state of California, it's community property. So even if you were to take your paycheck and put it into a bank account that was separate property bank account, now you've commingled it. So it's knowing what is separate, what is is community property. But a good example would be um, before you got married, uh, you have a car and you've had the car maybe let's say four or five years prior to marriage. It's your separate property. It's paid off. Yes. Okay, you get married and the car comes into the marriage. Okay, it's your separate property. Um, now here's some ways uh, that, that you can commingle it, which is something you don't want. 
because then on time of divorce, it, it isn't all yours. So you bring this car in and you decide after a couple years of marriage, you want to sell it. <laughs> yes. So you sell it and the money you get from it is your separate property. Okay, let's just say nothing's happened, no one's worked yes. on it. Mm -hmm. We'll make it a real easy example. Right. You sell it. The mm -hmm. money's your separate property because it was derived from a separate property asset. Now, you can take that money and put it into a savings account. You can put it into a checking account or any type of things as long as there's not, it, it's just your separate property. So the safest thing is to get a saving, a brand new savings account, a brand new checking account, put the money in there. Now it stays separate, okay? If you were to take that money and put it in a joint bank account, you've mixed it, okay? So now it's not straight separate. If you uh, take it and put it in a bank account where you only have your paychecks, mm -hmm. you've mixed it. Right. So you wanna keep it separate. Um, so, so things like that, you just make sure that wherever you put it from before marriage, it was a car and you keep uh, the title, the registration, so you can prove to the court that you bought it before marriage with separate property. Mm -hmm. And then when you sell it during marriage, you get the money, you put it into a brand new bank account with no money, no community, anything. So there's passbooks and bank documentation, so you can prove that. Mm -hmm. And that you just, every step along the way, you keep it segregated and you keep the document showing where it went and that it always stayed separate. Now, um, something that people don't think of is let's say it's reversed and you don't sell it, um, but you, uh, prior to selling it and you're driving the car around and the car breaks, mm -hmm. your husband or wife's a right. mechanic and they take it to their shop and they fix it. They put their labor, their energy into all the repairs. Mm -hmm. um, they put their money into buying the parts. Yeah. Okay, so now you have an asset that started out separate property because yeah. it was your car prior to marriage, mm -hmm. but your spouse during the marriage put in their community effort and their community right. labor. Right. Now it can be challenged that there may be a mix. So if you want to keep separate properties separate, the best way to do it is not to mix it with anything with the community. And most people don't realize that even your spouse's labor and effort is considered community property right. that, that has a value. So it's, it's keeping everything very, very separate and keeping the documentation. Right. So like I said, you bought the car prior to, right. you have the, the buy and sell. Mm -hmm. If you were to sell it and then put it in a bank account, mm -hmm. there's passbooks for the bank account. Right. Then you take it from the bank account and you put the money into buying stocks. Keep the paperwork at each step. Um, and that way a forensic accountant like Tatiana if there's a dispute, who's, if, if it's community asset, because the spouse will say, he bought those stocks while we were married, it's community. Right. Right. And that's a presumption that is true. Oh, he spent money managing it. Yes. So that became community. Yes. So right. if you can uh, a document where everything went, you can trace it back to its uh, separate property origin. Yeah. Yeah. And then it could be, you know, your separate property at divorce. So I feel like I, I hear two very important, uh, I guess, distinctions. One okay. is uh, physical, I guess, tracing, right? Not mm -hmm. to commingle it like in the same bank account or uh, things like that. And number two is uh, labor. That, yes. That were involved during the yes. marriage. Yes. That, that actually, even though it's not the material thing, but you can apply value to it. And that's... Oh, that, yeah, because people what, have value, what, like you as an accountant, yes. okay? Yeah. You're, you're married, and if your husband needs his taxes done right. or something, and you this is something that you normally would charge for, exactly. and you have a business, yes. mm -hmm. and he benefits... Right. Um, it, by your labor and this and that while you're married, right. that's considered a community asset. Yes. You're an asset. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And uh, yeah, the car is a very, like, I guess, a tangible, tangible, small asset, but yes. uh, that can be applied to, like, I don't know, real property, business. Oh, yeah. So that's where it gets complicated main takeaway <laughs> keep your separate properties separate as much as possible don't commingle it with any transfers or uh, paychecks that are earned during the marriage yes right um, yeah otherwise 
and it, another it, important it has to all be traced yes and it's very time consuming and but it it's not as time consuming if you save all the documentation so that a forensic accountant can go through it and boom 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 show the judge the right. judge is like proof and evidence rather than you just saying i swear i i put the money uh from the car sale into whatever so normally there's there's paperwork it's just a matter of keeping it right. even with bank accounts you can go to the bank and there's paperwork um when you buy a house mm -hmm. there's uh paperwork at the county yeah. that's recorded yeah. um things like that and if anyone uh helps in the maintenance of it mm -hmm. keep a ledger Right. of what they did so this was my car before marriage mm -hmm. uh, my my spouse is a mechanic great mechanic and every time it breaks this these are the things he fixed on these dates da 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 and i know that's kind of complicated and people don't like doing it but just small ledgers if you like and then at least at the end there's some idea of how much labor they commingled into separate property mm -hmm. or just make it easier take it to pet boys yeah. <laughs> pay, pay a stranger um, and it, it keeps the classification separate well but if you pay during the marriage even to a stranger from community funds that's that's, it. that's true so, so you take it out of your <laughs> separate bank account right right so and uh, remember that uh, the person claiming separate property he has a burden of proof right Peggy? or she or oh, she I mean the person <laughs> yeah um, yes, the burden of proof is always the person that wants yes. to classify it as separate property because it's it's easier on the courts and everything like yeah. that just to say everything gained during marriage yeah. is community. The other spouse will always say it's community because yeah. they want their 50-50 split. But if you want to show and prove that uh, it's separate property, it's up to the individual that wants it separate property yeah. uh, to prove it and they have the burden yeah. of proof. That's why if it's some asset that you really care about, yes. uh, keep all the documents. You have to be diligent about it. Yes. Some other things uh, like the gifts, uh, to determine gifts. If it's, a, if it's a gift given just to you, it's your separate property. If it's a gift given to both of you, like a wedding gift right. that's given to the couple, then then yeah. that's a then you each and you know once have again yeah once you get that separate property gift or inheritance yeah put it aside in a separate account if you want to preserve it yes and then so you can separately trace what happened to those separate funds yes oh and i guess one more uh, important point i remember how you mentioned you have clients they they say oh and i paid this from my separate property during the marriage so can i get it back so oh yes yes that? yes yes <laughs> yes i had one that said it was yeah. very cute um you know i uh i had an inheritance of so much money and i kept it separate and i did everything great just like you said peggy yeah. and it is separate <laughs> and i took my wife out to eat and i used the money from my separate checking account and i paid some bills for the house from my separate checking account we and we went on a vacation <laughs> and he said well since i i kept good records and and it can prove it's my separate property can I get it back well that's considered a gift <laughs> so so yeah, so I'm you're even if it's <laughs> not to the marriage or in the marriage it's a gift and and it's part of of something that you're giving to the community and normally no you can't get that back but I thought that was really cute yeah he tried <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, if anybody has any questions uh, or like to go over anything personal or private or would like more information about some of the things we touched on, please uh, go to the link below. You can write your questions, write your comments. Uh, Tatiana and I have our uh, addresses and emails and phone numbers and things like that there. And until then, everyone, Stay safe and stay, stay well. well. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>